breakfast day seven, my final day of the challenge. And I have made some French toast and um, got some strawberries and blueberries and yogurt and a bit of cinnamon on top. For the French toast mixture, I used a uh, Valencian orange extract, uh, which sounds very fancy, and some vanilla extract for some flavour because they don't contain any sugar. But uh, hopefully will be flavourful, we will find out. This is absolutely a breakfast where you would love to have like syrup or sugar. Um, like cinnamon sugar would be really nice as well, sprinkled over. So I am curious to explore and see what happens with regards to having a sugar-free breakfast and just focusing on the taste of the fruit and um, the, the yogurt and the bread itself. Um, and yeah, I can't believe seven days. Seven days I never, well, I, I knew I could do it, but I didn't think that it would be as easy as this actually. So interesting. More reflections later. Let's give the let's give the toast a go. Okay, so it's nice, but it's not knock your socks off nice. It's not like, oh it's so good, I can't wait to take another bite. I really can taste the orange flavour, which is lovely actually. Um, but it would be nice if there was definitely more sweetness. So not at all um unedible. But I guess kind of going forward, what I would like to get to is a point where I could have sugar or sweet things to augment the taste of my food in a planned way that's not necessarily reliant on me and my emotions. So for example, like having sugar on this for breakfast and having a, a limited amount, not going crazy, would be okay because it's not like I'm then using sugar to comfort eat. It's like, no, no, I'm just using sugar as I would salt to enhance the flavor of my food. My problem is when I start eating, uh, looking for comfort and to kind of feel a certain way that I use sugar. That's where it may become problematic. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna keep on eating and then see what we have for the last day. Day seven lunch and it's the leftover Linda McCartney fake chicken and I just checked I my favorite buffalo sauce hot shop sauce shop thing whatever is less than five grams of sugar per hundred grams so I'm gonna have some chicken and some buffalo sauce and we're gonna get real spicy yes. day seven post lunch snack of a pear Never has a pear been so anticipated after the lovely spicy buffalo sauce. Gorgeous, cooling, creamy pear. Bring it on. Mmm, how appetizing does that look? This is my day seven pre-dinner. The very last of the vegetable soupy stew. And I have uh, microwaved it in the bowl that I had the leftovers in. Hence why uh, it's such a immersive bowl. For such a small amount of stew. I um, am not feeling great. I think I just might be coming down with something and like every now and then it kind of flares up and then it goes back away again. But I thought I wanted something kind of healthy, comforting, warm and this is 100% gonna tick those boxes. Um, I did then, just before I decided to go for this bowl, I did start looking in the cupboards as I normally would when I'm feeling not great and looking for sweet stuff and gratefully there was no sweet stuff in the cupboard for me to eat so that was helpful um, but absolutely it was in that searching mode searching for some form of um, niceness so I hope and I'm sure actually that this bowl will satisfy that because it is really tasty and healthy and can only do me good, hopefully. Day seven, dinner, the last supper. The last supper of the no sugar challenge. And I have got some chickpeas from Aldi. It's like a bag of chickpeas and lentils, maybe even a bit of rice uh, curried and a little mini naan bread. And I'm gonna have it with some, I can't believe it's not butter. Um, and yeah, mood wise, I am feeling, I'm feeling okay. 
generally good. Again, not very many cravings today. Um, don't really feel like I'm missing out. It's really interesting to me to think that I'm here now feeling how I am feeling. That's our ice machine. Um, when I have in the past felt like I've been unable to stop eating. I've been massively over binging on sugar, standing up, not even sitting. My, my sugar binges are characterized by standing as if that makes it better and just looking around for whatever I can to satisfy that craving um, and feeling like I'm having to talk to myself out loud to say, Alison, stop now. So you need to stop eating. When the last few days and most of the challenge, I seem to have been really level, really able and in control of my food. I don't know if that's because the more you eat sugar, the more you crave it or something else entirely. Perhaps it's just the challenge giving me the extra motivation. I don't know. But yeah, reflecting on it. And I will we'll do some more reflections. But it's um, it's been really interesting. And I'm really, really glad I've done it. Bon appetit. I had to go for another naan. It was just too good. Naan and butter. It's like the Indian version of a croissant. Where you take the croissant, cut bits off, put butter on it put it in your mouth. Oh, each bite is a gorgeous, gorgeous delight. Day seven, my final, final, final food of the day of the challenge, and it's some baked oats. So baked oats in a very large bowl because I, uh, the ramekins that I normally use, I left at my mum and dad's house yesterday because they were being uh, washed after being covered in tiramisu. So these baked oats, I went through a phase. I mean, I'm still going through a phase. The challenge kind of halted the phase temporarily of baked oats because it's an amazing way to eat what feels like cake in a sort of healthy fashion. Um, so this is made with oats, uh, soy milk, banana, baking powder, cocoa powder, and my date allowance, my 30 grams of dates, all blended and then baked in the oven. And you get this amazing cakey texture, but you don't have the, uh, but it's basically a porridge. It's basically like a blended cooked porridge. Um, so it feels like it is like decadent, but healthy. And I have no idea how it's gonna taste without additional sweetness. Uh, and also being cooked in completely the wrong size bowl. So let me just dig in and show you. So before when I've made baked oats, just so you know, I've done a like malted chocolate version where you pop a square of dark chocolate into the bottom and then you get like this malted lava effect. I mean, that's quite exciting already, isn't it? That kind of mushy effect. It's not very cakey, but gosh, that looks good. Okay, so I'm gonna go in, I'll let you know what it tastes like. So there you can see on the side, it's more cakey and in the middle, it's uh, less cooked and it it tastes nice i tell you there's actually um a slightly unpleasant flavor i don't know if it's from the bananas or the dates but there's something kind of towards the back of my mouth that feels just a little bit too i want to say acrid but it can't be acrid because there's nothing bitter in here it's just all sweet stuff um maybe sometimes i think when you have like no, I have no idea. But I mean, it's nice enough. I'm a little bit disappointed as I thought that that would be really nice and would be a lovely end to the meal. But it's not kind of ticket. It's ticking the lovely, comforting, warm button uh, box. You don't take a button, do you? Um, but it's not ticking the super tasty box. Maybe if I get some yogurt. Should I get some yogurt and see if that helps? Let's see that. Okay, I found some creme fraiche and that helps. That really helps because the creme fraiche is kind of creamy but ever so slightly sour. So that helps to temper whatever is going on that's slightly too much. I think because of the dates 
um, in this. So actually, yay, creme fraiche saves the day. Uh, I'm going to eat this and then I'm going to make myself a licorice and peppermint tea um, and watch Line of Duty, which I'm so excited for. So I will say goodbye, stop filming and well, probably well done me for sticking to the challenge. I guess I'll find out tomorrow if I haven't done any naughty nibbles, but I haven't done so far. So chances are probably not. Um, but yeah, I'll see you on the other side.